Okay, so good morning, everyone. My name is Lucas Probro. I'm responsible in ISORP for the demos for the whole pre sale process in general. And uh, therefore, today I will be presenting you the new version, the upcoming version of ISORP product, which is called EPOS. So let's have a look to what we have, uh, what it consists from, and whether it is uh, a good choice for you as well, whether you would like it. And of course, feel free to uh, to use the chat for any you know questions you might have during the presentation, or you can also ask me or my colleague directly using the microphone. So let's get started. So let's start first of all in here. That is the web client. You know, I sort of have one important idea which should be a little bit explained, and that is to provide you all-in-one interface, meaning that in here, in the ISORP web client, especially in this upcoming version of EPOS, the user have access to all those features he might use, starting from an email, coming through a team chat for team collaboration, communication in between internal and external people, going to conferences, to organizing conferences, recordings, sharing those recordings, exactly the same way as you are connected at the moment. Then of course, calendars, you know, organizing various calendars, uh, working with multiple calendars, even with shared calendars, public resources, all the other stuff. Then throughout the contacts, files and documents, which allows you to very easily just using one single click, start editing any office-like document right in the browser in the ISOP web client. And then also a tasks for personal tasks, you know, assigning tasks to your colleagues throughout the notes. And recently we also added NEPSTOR, uh, which allow users to very easily just using few steps pair their mobile devices with iSwerp and also download various uh, applications which we offer, for example, iSwerp Desktop, which includes not only desktop offices, but also desktop client, which is our own application, um, solely working as the replacement of Outlook. And of course, a team chat desktop or file sync for synchronization of files in between the user account and uh, their devices. And also on the right side, you, you can see that there is a chat. This chat is basically one-to-one. -one. It's a private chat, private type of the conversation, which is always in between one and the other person. Uh, it handles all the history. And because we also have the application for mobile devices, uh, then it doesn't really matter whether the chat has been started in the web client or in uh, the mobile device because uh, the whole synchronization, uh, the whole conversation is synchronized and accessible throughout all those devices. <clears throat> and one of the most important thing, uh, which is in this ISORP EPOS version, is the dashboard. You know, dashboards you can you can imagine as a simplified uh, desktop, as we all know from from personal computers in general. But it is in the web client, you know, accessible throughout any type of web browser from anywhere, literally anywhere around the globe. So all you need is just the browser. And as you can see here, you have access to all those various features. But let's go through all of those one by one in a little bit more of detail. So coming back to an email, ISORP uses all the basic standards all the standards in the email and collaboration industry, meaning that uh, it also, it of course has IMAP, POP3, SMTP, all SSL connections secured, you know, uh, and encrypted. It also have CalDAV, CARDAV, WebDAV, all those type of communications. And as all we as expect, uh, also exchange ActiveSync for synchronization with mobile devices, which is currently, uh, you know, industry standard. So uh, in terms of that, of course, user uh, 
may organize his emails into folders and subfolders, also based on the rules which he can create. He may also have access to shared inboxes. So in case uh, here, my colleague Celia is, for example, on vacation and I should be, you know, uh, managing her inbox. Uh, if it's possible, uh, if it's necessary, she can also uh, give me a permission to send her emails on behalf of her. Uh, so during the vacation, I can be, you know, the delegate of her inbox. And of course, also public inboxes. Those are the, um, mostly used for <clears throat> uh, those generic email addresses like info, marketing, uh, sales, and other stuff. So um, where all those cases where uh, you need to have multiple team members co-working on the same email messages, but uh, keeping them, you know, synchronized. What email has been already, you know, uh, replied? and uh, uh, what uh, what was the reply about. Good. So I don't really want to, to go that deep in, in just an email because we all know uh, what the email is and uh, what to expect from that. So just a few highlights. Uh, of course, you may work with uh, various tags. As you can see, you can also uh, select a custom color. You can, of course, uh, search by this tag. Uh, so get immediate results of what else, you know, includes this tag uh, which you use there. Uh, you may also work with uh, flex to mark it as done or mark it to be done. And uh, you may ask even yourself, uh, how do we, you know, move the file to or move the email to a different folder? Well, because recently we implemented this minimized folder tree might be difficult you know to uh, move those messages in between various folders but the thing is that we were thinking how to do that as smooth as possible so we just drag it and drop it to a pop-up uh, with the folder tree yeah so it is very easy very convenient um, and uh, I would say not expl no explanation is actually needed uh, once you you know uh, show it to uh, a user Another quite unique thing is that, uh, for example, here I received from Jerry a demo questionnaire, and he's asking me to, to check the questionnaire if it is OK. So let's have a look. In ISOP, all you need to do is just click on the you know attachment. As you can see, uh, you really get an Excel uh, right in the browser again. So let me check it, pre-sales questionnaire, 2022. There we go. Uh, the rest looks pretty much okay. The customer name we can put in bold, full in as well. Good. There we go. So I'm done. Let's close it. And yeah, uh, the system automatically recognizes that I have modified the file which actually was received as the attachment. So what else? Well, of course, I would like to send the modify file back. So yes, and there you go. The file is already attached. And my goal is just to say revised and send it. So that is very easy. <laughs> how to how to work with uh, with you know uh, online editing of the document which has been received as an email attachment. And by the way, when we were working with the attachments, let's, let me show you one more thing. I'll upload here one file, which is ISO brand manual. Uh, but the problem is that it's a PDF and because it's, uh, you know, done by designers and they all love, you know, those high resolution uh, pictures, the manual itself has 76 megabytes, which is too huge to be sent out directly, you know, as, as the regular attachment. And since ISORP EPOS version, we decided to stop using direct attachments. You know what I mean? Those standard attachments, which we all are using, but they have many limitations. First of all, uh, yeah, there is a file size. Yeah, you can't really send out the message, which is uh, 76 megabytes to anyone outside of your company because the max message size is set 
most in most cases in between 10 or 15 megabytes. Um, the other one is, well, if you will do that, the problem is that once you send it out, you lose the control over the attachment. You have no idea whether someone watch it, whether someone, you know, have access to that, whether someone is not resending the attachments to anyone else. Yeah. So we decided to stop using the direct attachments anymore. And instead of it, we replace it with something we call smart attachment. And therefore, the file itself wouldn't really leave your own system. It will stay here in the files and documents of a user, of the sender. Yeah. And inside the message body, it will be replaced with just the link. And what else? Well, if you will have a look here to Upload Center, you can see that there is this brand manual, which I am going to send out. And once I will send it out, I'll be actually able to have a look to whether someone already accessed it. Yeah. So not only IP address and time of the access would be there, but I can revoke the link. And revoke the link means that in case I send it by a mistake and I'd like to you know, stop the, uh, stop the attachment to be distributed or downloadable or accessible, I can do it with just one single click. And that's something which you simply can't do in the regular attachment. So yeah, that's how it is. ISORP EPOS with uh, smart attachments are changing the way how we are going to you know, share details in between each other. And we'll send it to Casey. It's attached and send it. There we go. So are there any questions regarding uh, the messages itself? Because uh, I'm pretty sure the rest of that is, um, is all we expect from, you know, 2022 email system. Okay, so let's move on and let's have a look to a calendar. So of course, uh, user may have access to various calendars, not only his own calendars, but also resources. Yeah, so we can turn on several other uh, <clears throat> meeting rooms if you need it. Uh, of course, you can also change the color and you may have access also to shared calendars or public calendars of you know uh, teams or departments. And it all is visible in the overview right here. But let's have a look how to schedule a new meeting. Yeah. So let's say here, I'd like to create project A kickoff meeting. Get a reminder, 10 minutes upfront. Um, well, nowadays we, we you never know, you know, whether a person on the other side would be or wouldn't be able to join you uh, in person. So Let's just be sure, and I will create a conference link as well without recording. Yeah, that's one of my key tool or key feature because I always forgot, you know, to to turn on the recording. <clears throat> and from now on, during the invitation uh, creation, you are about to just enable it, and later on, uh, you don't really need to care about whether it is recorded or not because it will start recording automatically once a user will join. And yeah, ISOPREPOS also has the lobby mode, so you can turn on the lobby and therefore, you know, approve every single one who might join us. And there's also password protection. Uh, so in case you'd like to go in higher security mode for all the conferences, you can turn it on as well. Good. And of course, attendees. So I need to have their KC, Celia, and James. And just to be sure, I will also reserve the meeting room. There you go. Well, and now let's have a look on the right side because as you can see, the meeting just a few moments ago was green. Now it's red. What does it mean? Well, the red means that 
someone from all those attendees you have invited uh, might not be available during the time. Yeah? Uh, and as you can see, it is now Casey, uh, and she probably has something else in her calendar, and therefore uh, I know it, and it's it's red. Yeah. Now, especially in those situations where you are going to invite multiple people, it might be tricky to find when <laughs> we all would be able to you know have a meeting. So I sort of came up with this this type of button. Find the best time for a conference, a great one. You just click on it. It will immediately say you that, uh, well, if you will organize it in between 8 and 8.30, 9.9.30, and so on and so forth, it will be OK for everyone. So let's reschedule it to 3 up to 3.30 PM. Done. Yeah. Now we see that everyone is available. And just create it. And there we go. We have it. And once we were right click on it, we can join it. Within a few moments, I should also receive, yeah, there it is, a confirmation from the meeting room that the meeting room has already been booked for the meeting. And of course, once I will go into the conferences, as you can see, Project A kickoff meeting, 3 up 3, 30 p.m. is there. So that is how very easy it is to organize meeting. Doesn't matter whether it is, you know, online or in person or this type of hybrid meeting where someone might be available online and the others might go in person in the meeting room itself. And of course, all those data might be also synchronized to mobile devices. Doesn't really matter whether it's Android or iOS because we, we do support uh, both of them uh, using Exchange Active Sync protocol or Caldov Cardov synchronization as possible as well. So again, if you will have any questions, just feel free to to ask. And we are about to have a look to contacts. Well, um, contacts, yeah, <laughs> just the simple contacts uh, which we all know. But let me show you, uh, of course, there are also public contacts. And more importantly, this is a global address list. Yeah. So uh, in here, you have access to all other users in the same company. And therefore, uh, it's much easier for all of, all of us to uh, stay in contact with other people in the company. But the rest is pretty you know, obvious. <clears throat> Moving on to files and documents. So here you have access to whatever file you are going to upload or create, because you can also create new file here, new document, spreadsheet, presentation. Um, and of course, there are multiple uh, files supported. So it doesn't really matter whether it's a JPEG, whether it's uh, you know Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint presentation, or Word document, PDF, whatever. Even video uh, video can be stored there. Uh, and of course, by default, all those documents or all those files are shared just with you. Yeah? So they are private. Uh, but it's very easy to share them. You just hit the share button, and you immediately get way how to you know share with others, allow others to edit the document or provide them with just read only. You can also pass or protect the document and then just decide you know, whether it will be sent out via email or get just a shareable link and share it, for example, into a team chat or into instant messaging or in our channel or share the file directly into the team chat, which I will talk later about. The document is as well versioned. Yeah? So whatever change you do there or someone else will do there, it is version, so uh, there is automatic revisions, and you can come back to any previous version of the document. And of course, yeah, just click on it, and you are there. The presentation will load, and you can do whatever edits you need to, including animation, transitions, collaboration for notes, and 
yeah, presenter view. I would say 99% of all the users, all the standard users of Microsoft Office would be very confident, very much okay with all the functionalities which we are uh, you know, allowing you in the web client. So, and yeah, as I mentioned previously, but let me just uh, open it once again, all those files might be accessible also on desktop applications throughout the file sync. So no matter whether you are using, uh, you know, Windows system or Mac OS or Linux, we do have a tool which is called File Sync. It does pretty much the same stuff as Dropbox or OneDrive, Google Drive, you know, all those stuff. It just keeps all the data up to date according to whatever user has in here in his files of documents. And our yeah, our recent update of iSort Mobile allows you to get access to all those files also from mobile devices. Yeah. So for example, on iPhone, right in the files application, the native one, you have your ISORP EPOS and access to all those files like that would be they would be in your mobile at the moment. Good. So those are files and documents. And as I mentioned before, uh, once the document has been shared with someone else, I can open the tracking yeah, and we'll see immediately who accessed the file. Yeah, and uh, yeah, here we see uh, also the map. So I see that uh, someone from Stockholm accessed the file from Mobile Safari and what time, if, in case I need to you know, stop this behavior, uh, stop sending or sharing the file, I can very easily just revoke the link and there we go. So it's a very convenient way. Good. And we may move on. So tasks. Well, I will be honest to you. <clears throat> tasks are mostly for you know personal tasks. ISORP is not a, uh, the task management system. Even though we were thinking uh, some, some few years ago uh, to do uh, a huge upgrade on, on tasks, but then we decided that it would be much easier and much um, better for all our users to provide an easy way to integrate a great task management application into ISERP EPOS. Yeah. So that's our goal at the moment. We are working, hardly working on all the integrations. So no matter what kind of you know application you'd like, to use for task management, uh, it, there'll be an easy way to integrate it together with ISOR. So for example, me personally, I'm using uh, Meister task, and that's exactly uh, what you would be able to use uh, in the upcoming version. Of course, ISOR would hold all the data, yeah, so it will store all the data, but the UI and UX and all the mobile apps uh, would be available uh, for you throughout uh, the vendor you'd like to use. Then notes. Yeah, we all use notes. Uh, notes might be also synchronized in between mobile devices and uh, and ISORP EPOS as well. And um, yeah, one of the things which I really like on dashboard is that you can pin the note here. Yeah, so whatever is currently you know uh, the topic number one for you, you can pin it here. Uh, into your sort of a desktop, yeah, the dashboard itself. So that that is uh, a note pinned in the dashboard, and you can go finally to a team chat. So team chat, basically, <laughs> we all know the situations where uh, you need to uh, start a new project yeah, to organize uh, some event. Uh, to discuss a certain topic with multiple people. And we all used before, um, you know, those chain of emails, which became so messy. And you spent a lot, a lot of time just by trying to organize all of those messages and trying to understand and, and keep the pace with all those replies within the company. And that's exactly what TeamJet is all about. Yeah? You don't need to waste your time you just need to create a new room, team chat room, private or public, and uh, invite all those members which you'd like to have there. 
and very easily just start working and collaborating with them at one single place. So as you can see, we have quite a lot of uh, team chat um, rooms. For example, here we are organizing a partners conference and it's very easy. You just uh, invite all those people who you'd like to have there. And by the way, those people are not limited to just ISORP users. Yeah, you can also very easily invite there an external person, the ones who have nothing to do with ISORP. We call those users as a guest account. And those guest accounts are for free. Yeah? So you, it, it, they, they don't really count against your license. And um, they will have access exactly to just those team chat rooms or they have been invited, uh, but can join you and can very easily use all the features inside uh, the team chat itself. So for example, here you see uh, the partner webinar uh, presentation. So we all can collaborate and um, uh, use that presentation right in the team chat. Yeah. Uh, if there are some comments regarding that, you can have a look to those. So it's much easier than to see it, you know, side by side. So you really know what the conversation was about. Can you please update the logo in this presentation? Well, of course, yeah, we see that this one is still the old one. So that's uh, to be done. <clears throat> and whatever you need to edit is there. Yeah. Everything is stored automatically in the team chat. So you don't even need to save it. You just close it. And there we go. All those changes has been uh, stored safely in the team chat. And recently we also changed how, you know, the conversation here is handled. Uh, because once you send a post, every single post you do is a new topic inside the team chat room. But of course, once you'd like to do some reply about it, it should be as a separate thread. Yeah. So every single post have its own thread where you can discuss that in more details. And of course, as you can imagine, once you are dealing with a lot of team chat rooms, it might be pretty messy or uncomfortable to keep a track of where else you have been mentioned or where else you are involved. So the good thing is that here in thread view, you see all of those parts where you are involved for whatever reason. Someone will mention you, there you go, it will be here. Someone will reply you, you will see it here. Yeah. No matter in what exactly team chat room has it happened, you will see it right here. And what else? You don't even need to be in team chat. You just may, you know, go in here and work on emails. On the right side, you still have access to all those conversations. So you don't need to look for a particular team chat room where to go in order to reply. You can reply right from here. I'm just reminding new logo to be changed. So yeah, this will immediately pop up uh, on Celia's mobile because she of course have a team chat mobile where all those notifications are coming. And yeah, she will also see it in the follow threads uh, because once you will be mentioned, uh, you will get notification in here as well. <clears throat> so that is team chat. I mean, awesome tool for uh, all those, you know, team conversations and not that, it's not all because, um, of course, from time to time, you need to organize an e event yeah, or meeting. So you just go here and start new conference and will immediately invite all of those attendees, meaning all of those members of the team chat room. And so you don't do need to go through all, all of them one by one. Uh, you just need to go into the team chat and invite them. Yeah. They all will have the invitation in their calendars. Good. Well, what else? I'd like to show you one more thing uh, because recently we also implemented this open a new window. Open a new window means that you will see it as a separate window. Yeah. 
And that means that, for example, once you will write a new email, you can open it in a different tab. Not only tab, but it's perfect match for all those multi-screen displays and multi-screen scenarios. So once you have two monitors or three monitors, whatever, or CO5, <laughs> I'm sure um, you will mostly, most probably work with two or three. So uh, it's great to to have you know this this type of window on one screen, um, team chat on another screen, and for example, instant messaging uh, with uh, some of the guys on another screen. Yeah. So there you go. This is how you can very easily uh, work and organize your work also on multiple displays. Good. So um, what else do we have here? Of course, conferences. So as I mentioned before, all the conferences might be recorded. And then you will see uh, in history all those recordings. Unfortunately, I don't have one here. But uh, yeah, trust me, it's there. And then uh, in the upcoming, you see you know those recurrent or um, on-demand uh, conferences, uh, which you will be able to just uh, join using Meet now. And of course, you can also schedule it from here with all those features I mentioned already. Not only that, in our TeamChat mobile application, uh, you are allowed to uh, create an invitation right from the mobile device, join from the mobile device, of course, go through all those recordings. And what else? Recently, we also implemented Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is a perfect match for all the ones who are on the road. Yeah, so even when you are driving and you need to jump on a conference, you are able to do so using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Because on your dashboard of your, of your car, you will see I sort of team chat and everything will use your own you know, hands-free, so safe and still connected to a conference. So those are conferences. As I mentioned before, all you need for to join the conference is either the mobile device uh, with iSERP you know, uh, application on it, or uh, just the browser. Of course, all those browsers are you know supported except <laughs> Internet Explorer. You know what? It's it's just ridiculous that browser. But all of the others are uh, are supported. Chrome is the best one. Uh, but you may use uh, the others as well. For example, me, I'm, I'm using Safari, pretty fine. Everything is working there. <clears throat> uh, but more, more, most importantly, you don't need any application to be downloaded. Yeah, You don't need it. You will just share the link to anyone else and they will be able to join you on a conference call as well. So it's just a matter of a simple link. Okay. Yeah, uh, what I like also is, uh, especially when, you know, uh, I'm going through an email and uh, from time to time there is a question whether I will be free uh, on next Wednesday, 3 p.m. So let's open the calendar yeah, and I'll be able to, to go through uh, all those dates and have a look to my calendar, whether it looks okay or not. So that's a calendar also available right on your fingertips on the right side and it will stay there no matter where i am yeah so i can work you know on team chat and in, in my emails and still get access to um, the calendar on the right side and finally let's have a look to a dashboard so what is dashboard i already started to explain it a little bit but let me go through in a little bit more of details. So first of all, here on the left side, you see all those uh, current uh, or recent uh, work you, you, you were working on <clears throat> in ISOR peoples. So I see all those recordings. Yeah, I can also see uh, the demo questionnaire, which I worked recently on uh, some presentation as well as uh, the presentation which, which I worked uh, during this demo. Uh, I have access to notes 
and can also create folders and organize my files. So it's really the desktop experience. I mean, the desktop where you know we all are storing files and some some notes and other stuff. Because we were thinking how to create a unique interface where all our users may keep a track of their most up-to-date and most recent files and documents and things they are working on, and that is the dashboard. So because I'm currently working on you know demos of, of, of the EPOS on some marketing materials, and of course uh, those, uh, for example, presentations as well as the, the webinars, so that's why I see it right here, because that is most important for me at the moment. Later on, in the, up, in the more advanced versions, we are going to also allow you to share the dashboard with someone else. So imagine the situation that you are <clears throat> in a meeting, organizing the meeting and online. So every single meeting has its own notes. There you go, you have it. Most of the meetings are also used for discuss some files. There you go. And of course, we all, or all those attendees, need to have access to the recording. So all of that stuff is right here and can be shared in between the other members. Yeah? So one person is taking note and we, we can reopen the whole session and have a look what has been done and what is still on hold or in progress or whatever. So that is a great tool, uh, the dashboard. And I, I'm really looking forward to implement even more features like uh, integrations with the MeisterTask or um, our CEO is, is really looking forward to have their Spotify player. Yeah, even that might be possible in the upcoming version. So uh, we have a big plans with uh, the dashboard itself. Yeah, and one last thing, which I forget to mention, sorry about that, uh, is the administration. If system recognizes me as the administrator, I have here, uh, I would say, mm, several links you know, into the administration itself. So I have uh, information that new version is available um, and I can you know, go directly to, uh, to the website and check what's, what's new there. I can manage the web client settings uh, for all our users. I can go into domains and you know, create new users, create new domains, modify the configuration of the domain itself, assigning limits, uh, white labeling, I can go directly into system administration to check, you know, antivirus, anti-spam configuration and other stuff. Go with the users, you know, reset their passwords if they need to, uh, you know, turn on uh, out of offices, all that kind of stuff. As well as, of course, uh, the less <laughs> favorite thing, the billing. Yeah. So just to wrap it up, um, I believe, you know, the ISERP EPOS is, is really a huge step in ISERP history. It offers you so much, but still in a very simplified way. You all have all those features. Every single user have all those features in just one single browser window. And um, it's secured. It's based on standards. And um, all we need is you to go through that. I'm sure you will love it as well, and your users especially. And we will help you with the whole, you know, implementation, migration, with all the other stuff. We are not selling just the license. We do support you during the whole process of transition from the current solution to iSERP. So thank you very much for your attention. If case, in case you have still some questions, just feel free to ask, yeah? write in chat or write us an email, or uh, we can, in, in case you will have multiple questions, we can go uh, into another meeting just to answer you all those questions. We'll be ready to help you and to guide you throughout the whole process, as I promised. So thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.